What's your name? My name is Kals. Can I examine your head? Yes. Thank you. Now I am inspecting the hair for its texture, for its distribution. It appears to be normal. And now I am inspecting the scalp. Now I am inspecting the skull. There is no fracture. It appears to be normal. And then now, then I am inspecting the skin of the head. Now I am inspecting the face. Now I am palpating the face for sinuses. Or for any masses or abnormalities in the face. After greeting the patient, we should first examine the visual acuity of the patient with the help of Snellen chart. Now to test the visual field of the patient, we should perform confrontation visual field testing. Now inspect the eyelids, eyelashes and eyebrow of the patient with the help of pen light. Now inspect the cornea. Now we are checking the optic nerve injury by light reaction test. Now we are performing near reaction test to assess the pupil. Now we are testing the function of 6 extraocular muscles. After greeting the patient, we are examining the external surface of the ear with the help of pen light and now with the help of otoscope, we are examining the inner surface of the ear. Now we are performing the whispered voice test. Now we will test the hearing loss of the patient with the Weber test for localization and Rene test for conduction. Now inspect the anterior and inferior surfaces of nose, inspect nasal vestibule using pen light, inspect inside nares with the otoscope and place nasal specula outside the instrument and discard it. Now palpate for frontal and maxillary sinuses. Inspect the mucosa of the tongue, inspect the teeth, check for ulcers if there is any. Now inspect the tongue, its surfaces with the help of gauge. Do not forget to check the gag reflex with the help of tongue blade. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? I'm Zahid. Uh, can I examine your neck? Yes. Now first inspect the symmetry of the neck and note any mass if there is any. Now we will inspect the lymph nodes. We will use the pads of index and middle finger of the both hands and then first we will inspect the pre-auricular nodes then posterior auricular then occipital then tonsillar then submandibular and then mental then superficial cervical lymph nodes then posterior cervical lymph nodes then deep cervical lymph nodes and then supraclavicular lymph nodes. Now we will inspect the trachea for symmetry and then we will palpate the trachea with the finger on the, tra on the trachea, the, in the index finger on the trachea and then we will see the distance between the trachea and sternocleidomastoid muscles on both sides. Now we will auscultate the trachea to check the breath sounds over it. Now we will inspect the thyroid gland while the patient swallowing the water. Can I take a sip of water? Can you please swallow the water? While the patient was swallowing the water, we can see the upward movement of thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage and thyroid gland itself. So happy. Now for palpation of thyroid gland, 
we should ask the patient to take a sip of water while the patient swallows we should feel the movement of thyroid gland towards the upside My name is Dr. Puneet Bakshi. What is your name? My name is Kiran Bakshi. What is your age? 46. Do you have any symptom or pain on your chest? No. Okay. As we begin the examination, take a courteous, gentle approach. Let the patient know that you are going to examine her breast. As we all know that uh, breast tends to swell and become tender and nodular before menses. So the best time to examine the breast is 5 to 7 days after the menstrual. Do you have any problem if you examine your breast? No doctor, I have no problem. <laughs> Inspection. Adequate inspection A shall require full exposure of the chest, but later in the examination, cover one breast while you palpate the other breast. Inspect the breast and nipple when patient in sitting position. First inspect when the arms are at sight. Inspect the general appearance of the skin including color, thickening of the skin, size and symmetry of the breast, contour of the breast and characteristics of the nipple including size and shape. Now inspect when arms are over the head. To bring out dimpling or retraction that may otherwise be invisible, ask the patient to raise her hand over the head. Then press her hand against her rib to contract pectoral muscles. Inspect the breast contour carefully in each position. When the breasts are large and pendulous, it may be useful to have the patient lean forward, supported by the back of chair or examiner's hand. Now palpation. Palpation is best performed when the breast tissue is flattened and the patient should be in supine position. A thorough examination takes at least 3 minutes for each breast. Use the pads of 2nd, 3rd and 4th finger, keeping the fingers slightly flexed. It is important to be systematic. The vertical strip pattern is currently the best currently evaluated method for detecting breast masses. Palpate in small concentric circles, applying light, medium and deep pressure at each examining point. Press more firmly to reach the deeper tissue of large breast. Examine the entire breast, including the periphery, tail and axilla. Now palpating the lateral portion of the breast. To examine the lateral portion of the breast, ask the patient to roll onto the opposite hip and placing her hand on the forehand, but keeping the shoulder pressed against the bed or examining table. This flattens the lateral breast tissues. Now begin the palpation. Begin palpation in the axilla, moving in a straight line down to the bra line. Then move the fingers medially and palpate in a vertical strip up to the chest to the clavicle. Continue in a vertical overlapping strips until you reach the nipple. Then reposition the patient to flatten the medial portion of the breast. Now examining the medial portion of the breast. To examine the medial portion of the breast, ask the patient to lie with her shoulder flat against the breast or examining table, placing her hand at her neck and lifting her elbow which is even with her shoulder. Palpate in a straight line, down to the lip line, then back to the clavicle and continue in a vertical overlapping strips to the mid sternum. Palpate each nipple, noting its elasticity. If there is a history of nipple discharge, try to determine its origin by compressing the areola with your index finger and place in a radial position around the nipple Watch for discharge expressed from any of the duct opening on the nipple surface. Note the color, consistency, quantity of any discharge and the exact location where it appears. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. What is your name? My name is Thomas. Uh, do you have any symptoms linked with the abdomen? Uh, no, no, there are no. Uh, can you allow me to examine your abdomen? Yes, of course. Thank you. First, we will start with the inspection. We will see the general appearance of the abdomen while patient is in supine position. Then we will inspect the any bulges and any kind of movement of the abdomen and peristalsis of the intestine. And then we will see the temperature of the abdomen. Is it warm or cool? Or we will see if there is any stria. Now we will inspect the umbilicus. We will see its symmetry and is there any bulges or not. Auscultation provides important information regarding bowel motility. We should perform auscultation before percussion and palpation because as we know that percussion and palpation alters the characteristics of bowel sound. So first we will uh, put the diaphragm of the stethoscope on the patient's abdomen in all the four quadrants. And then we will listen the sound. Normally the abdomen sound Con consist of clicks and gurgles which is estimating to be 5 to 34 times per minute now we will auscultate for the bruise on the iota iliac artery and femoral artery now we will auscultate on liver and spleen for frictional rub
percussion basically helps us to assess the amount and distribution of the gas in the abdomen and the masses having liquid or solid substances or the size of liver and spleen. Now we will uh, percuss all four quadrants for checking the sound of tympani. Tympani basically predominates in the GI tract because of gas. Now I am percussing in all four quadrants. Note any dull areas for underlying mass and enlarged organ. Now palpation. Gentle palpation aids in identifying the abdomen tenderness, muscle rigidity and some superficial masses and organ. Now keep the hand and forearm in the horizontal plane and with fingers together start palpating the abdomen in all four quadrants. Deep palpation. Deep palpation basically lineates the liver edge, kidneys and other organs of the abdomen. Now we will just in the previous manner, we just um, use two hands, uh, fingers of the palmar side and press it gently on all four quadrants and we will identify any masses, its size, its consistency, its location and pulsations or any mass. Now we will start the digital rectal examination. Do not forget to take the consent of the patient. So first starting with the DRE, first we have to wear the glove. Take gel on our index finger and we should ask the patient to roll on to the opposite side with the hips flexed. Now we have to insert the index finger into the rectum as far as it, it will go following the sacral curvature. If there it if there's a problem with anal sphincter, ask the patient to squeeze the examining finger to assess the anal tone. Examine the posterior and lateral walls of the rectum for palpable lumps or tears. Assess the presence or absence of feces, which is palpable as a mobile putty-like substance, which is in constipation may be hard, and which we uh, which we can indent with our finger tip. Now remove the index finger and notice if there is any blood or feces. First wet hands with water, then apply enough soap to cover all hand surfaces, then according to WHO protocol, scrub hand from hand towards the elbow. Now after scrubbing the nails properly with the scrubber, we should leave the scrubber in the basin and now we should put povidone iodine solution on hand and forearm. With the help of scrubber, we should scrub our hands and forearm from hand toward the elbow direction. Thereafter, we should rinse with water with the same direction from hand towards the water. Do not touch anything while rinsing the water. After scrubbing the hand, we should take one sterile towel to dry our hands. Dispose of the towel after use. After sanitizing the hands, we should wear gloves. After wearing glove, we should wear mask, head cap, shoe cover. Thereafter sanitizing the hand again, we should wear gown and then the surgical gloves. Now after the procedure, remove all the PPE and dispose it in trash. Now first we will start with one hand knot time. Now we will do two hand knot time. <laughs> 